Now we're going to add some resistance to the shuffle stride. The first way that we're going to add resistance is by pushing a tire. Looks like this. Another variation in resistance here is to pull a player down the ice with this two foot shuffle stride or heel push. It would look like this. The second way to work on this shuffle stride with resistance is to push another player down the ice. It would look like this. Okay, in this third chapter on our Acceleration DVD, we're going to talk about resistance and strength. And one of the first exercises we can do is just push another player down the ice. We're going to do this from two different aspects. The first, we're going to go slow, strong, and deliberate. It will look like this. The second way to work on this resistance down the ice is with quick feet. Want the player to think of a sewing machine needle going up and down. Da -da 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 -da. Legs have to move real fast and it would look like this. Another way to work on this resistance training is to push a player with their back facing you. It would look like this. Now we're taking a look at resistance training with a coach or a player behind the other person who can vary the resistance themselves. So the first time we're going down in a snow plow stop and then I can control putting greater or less resistance on. Would look like this. Now we're going to take a look at a whole series of exercises, a progression of pulling and resistance training. And we're changing the resistance from the player behind. Here we're going into a one knee position while the player in front pulls. Looks like this. Our next exercise in the resistance progression is a, for the player from behind to go down on both knees. Looks like this. Okay. The next exercise in our progression to add more resistance is to now have a player sitting on the ice and pull them down the ice. It would look like this. Now
Now for one of the greatest amounts of resistance, we can do this exercise while pulling a player laying down and would look like this. The second way for a coach or a player to provide resistance from behind is with a two foot hockey stop. Here again you can dig in a little bit more varying the resistance. Would look like this. This next exercise in our resistance progression is to ski behind the player. It's one thing to provide resistance at a constant rate, but now by skiing behind the player, we're going to be making a tight turn and that will cause a pull from one side of the player and pull the player slightly back or off to the side. The player has to fight through that pull, just like in hockey. We get bumped, we get tugged here and there, and it will look like this. Our last exercise in this resistance progression is ski jumping. Now here as the player jumps from side to side they'll provide a little greater pull than before and also it's going to be a lot of fun for the player behind because they get to jump side to side. So it looks like this. Our next exercise for resistance is to use the parachute. Now the parachute is not something that can be used for quick starts because it doesn't open until you get up to speed. But it's excellent form of resistance training when a player is skating fast. So the way to work on this is over long distances and uh, laps around the rink because you can use this while cornering too. So James is going to show us what a couple laps are like. You'll notice uh, how he starts off in the beginning to how he finishes because they are difficult. Looks like this. So what we're doing here is running through a series of exercises, different ways that we can use these force cords. Now we're going to take a look at long strides with the force cords. Would look like this. What we've done here this time is increase the resistance with these force cords. Normally there's one cord on the inside running up the leg and one cord on the outside, but we've ta taken and attached two cords on the outside to increase the resistance. And Mike's going to go down in a long stride uh, manner again, and he's going to hold that push out there for added resistance. Looks like this. Here's our last exercise in the force cord uh, progression and what we've done this time is we've crisscrossed these inside uh, resistance cords. We're focusing this time on leg recovery so it'll pull that leg back in more and here we go. It looks like this.
Now we're going to take a look at using the leg harness. This leg harness was developed by Colin McLean. It has bungee cords running right down the thigh and on the inside of the leg as well too. Connects up top here to a belt around the waist. And this is a fantastic training tool to get resistance right in the range of motion. We showed it on the other DVDs. It's time to look at this tool while skating down the ice with our long stride. Looks like this. Another way that we can work on resistance when skating down the ice, working on our stride, push, and our force, is the use of a paved sled. This is an on-ice paved sled. They make as well a, a dry land paved sled. This is from www.pavesled.com, and uh, we're using it for power in our long stride. Looks like this. Now we're going to take a look at added weight as a form of resistance training. We can add weight as a weight vest, a weight belt, weight shorts, ankle weights, or even skate weights. So let's run through this list. I'm wearing a weight vest here, 20 pound weight vest. This is what I grew up with. This is the way players used to train and they would wear a weight vest because it puts pressure from the top down on the legs and provides a great form of resistance. As you're skating, it's a good workout. The only problem is that as players get tired, they tend to lean over. They tend to rest like this. And in between sets while you're resting, it puts too much strain on the back. We're now taking a look at a weight belt. This weight belt comes from Alpha Dog Sports. It's www.alphadogsports.com. It's the buckshot belt. We're talking about the difference between the weight jacket, the weight belt, the weight shorts, and skate weights. The weight belt is the best because the weight is on our hips and it's constantly pushing down. This way we don't drag our legs when we're tired. The weight's constantly pushing us down. So we skate around, we skate down the ice with the weight belt on. Looks like this. Another form of resistance training is the use of weight shorts. Weight shorts are fantastic because again, the weight is above the knee, forcing the knees to bend. And when the skater gets tired and they want to stand up, the weight is still pushing down on the knee, forcing them again to bend their knee. It's excellent form of resistance training. Players can wear these weight shorts underneath their equipment and they can just skate without equipment and wear these for training. Now we're taking a look at ankle weights and skate weights as a form of resistance training. They really fall into a different category because all the other weight, weight vests, weight belts, and weight shorts, that puts the weight above our waist pushing down. So even when the legs get tired, we still have weight forcing the knees to bend and they have to straighten up. They have to push up even if they're tired. Whereas with ankle weights and skate weights, when the player gets tired, they tend to drag their skates. They drag their heavy legs. And we see players skating like this. They're skating, moving their feet slowly. They don't bend their knees as much. When their legs get tired, they're just gonna end up dragging their legs. Studies even show that players that use ankle weights for over 30 days in training end up having a reverse effect on speed. So ankle weights and skate weights should not be considered as a good form of resistance training for hockey players.
Another great resistance training exercise is to have the players push the net down the ice. Often coaches do this at the end of practice as a conditioning skating drill. They may have players race against each other, have two nets going. Here's our progression of net pushes. Go Carl. Man, they're hot. If pushing the net was not hard enough, we can add more resistance by having a player stand on the net, increasing the weight. Would look like this. For added resistance here, we can have Carl push the net down the ice, not with just one player, but with two players on the net. It would look like this. Now for the greatest amount of resistance here, we're gonna have Carl push three players down the ice. Would look like this. Throw in some crossovers. Oh, that's a burner. <laughs>